Lindsay, thank you so much for joining me on the Salon Owners Collective Podcast. Super pleased to have you here. I am so excited. I'm meeting new friends halfway around the world. How cool is that? <laughs> exactly. Well, let's start with that. Lindsay, where are you in the world? Uh, what do you do? How did you get to be doing it? Yes, well, I am currently sitting in my home in Phoenix, Arizona, and it was so fun even just booking this time to chat with you because, you know, I realize you are actually in the future. It is tomorrow. And that was really, that was fun to just really get to realize how, how technology has allowed us to do this. And that is like the perfect setup for sharing what I do and how we came to have this beautiful conversation. I am the founder of Powerhouse Women. And in a short sentence, what that is, is a community for women who really know they are meant for more. And it's a place where we are just as unapologetic about our big, big vision and dreams as we are real and authentic about the fears that come along with building a business or you know, growing a salon like so many of your listeners are. And it started really out of my own desire, looking for community, feeling kind of alone, going through this weird, awkward growth stage of becoming an entrepreneur, growing a business and not having a lot of people around me who really understood what that was like. And I started to make friends right through social media, Instagram, you know, you name it. Uh, some of them were international, some right in my backyard. And I just realized there was such a need to have more of these honest conversations about what it really looks like. Number one, so that we don't leave the brand new business owners behind having them think that we have it all together or have figured something out that they can, that they can't but also so that you realize, I don't know about, about yourself, but I'm 10 years into entrepreneurship and I still feel fear every day because I'm growing. I'm always stepping into something new. And I was just really craving a space where we could just be really honest about that. So it's evolved now into a podcast, a community. We have a live event. Um, I wrote a book that was really the first place that this all started, but the goal being to remind other women that no one else has it all together. We're figuring this out as we go, and we're going to go further faster if we share what's working for us along the way and do this together versus thinking we have to do it alone. Yeah, I love that. I love how that organically has come together and turned into something really great and really big. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, look, one of the things, you know, when you I was listening to you talking about the fear and, and feeling alone and not just kind of making it up as we go um i think those beliefs that we have about whether or not we can do this or that we've got the skill or that she's better than me or all of that kind of stuff that gets in the way what would you say would be some of the common behaviors that you observe when you see that present for growing business owners Let's talk about that because I think sometimes we can't recognize that in ourselves until right. we recognize, oh, this is maybe a repeating pattern that I have. What are those behaviors? Mm, okay, this is such a great question. And I'm, I'm going to answer it and share even a little bit more of the backstory to really illustrate for everyone listening how to start to identify it for yourself because that self-awareness piece is key. If you can identify where the fears are or how you tend to sabotage your own success, then you can move through it. You can make a new choice. And what was happening in my life is I was in a season where I just knew there was more for me. I had a health and wellness business, had grown that to be fairly successful, but I just knew there was even just more potential. And someone had approached me in, about writing a book. And she said, this woman who was an acquaintance at the time, now dear friend, said, you know, this could be a great tool to grow your business. And to really establish you as a health and, and wellness expert. And it was the first time I ever said out loud, I don't think I want to talk about health and wellness anymore. I had this bigger idea brewing inside. And for all the same reasons that maybe some of you listening have started to doubt that calling for a greater purpose, I had a lot of fears around that, which I know we'll get into the specific fears, but what happened in this conversation really brought to light for me what I now see in so many others. And so what happened was she said, well, what would you like to share about? And I went on to tell her how as a business owner, I would meet so many incredible, talented, brilliant women 
who would share with me their heart or their desire to grow something of their own. Maybe it was a business, a passion project. It was this stirring inside that they just knew there was more. And the moment I would ask how that was going, or could I support them in some way without even skipping a beat, they would start to tell me all the reasons why they weren't ready or they couldn't, or they didn't know enough or who was going to listen to them. And in that moment, it made me say every time, wait, wait, did no one tell you that's, that's what we all feel all the time. So that's a sign that you're going in the right direction. And I'm sharing this with the woman on the phone and she pauses this very dramatic pause. And she says, well, Lindsay, if you don't write that book, who's going to now, I would love to tell you that this was the moment in history where I just realized my purpose. And I said, well, yes, I'm meant to be this amazing author. No, the very first thing out of my mouth was about to be, and I caught it. I was about to tell her why I wasn't a writer. And why no one knew me for that message. They knew me for this other message. I was about to list all of the excuses and I heard it in that moment. I heard, oh, wait, if this is what I want to help others move through, well, of course I would have to really look at that within myself first. So now we've kind of come within uh, my community to refer to this as the cute quit. So this is the moment where you're about to do something really bold, like, you know, you're meant to branch out on your own, or maybe it's go bigger, or, you know, I don't know what that could even look like. You, you know, it. you listening know that there's something for you that when I say, you know, you're meant for more, there's something that starts to stir up in you. And the moment you go to take the first step toward that, it's the voice. It's like, you know, you could do that tomorrow, or you don't really have a social media presence. You should probably spend six to nine months growing that before you ever put this idea out there. Or sometimes it's really sneaky and it says, you've been working so hard. You deserve a break. You really just need to give yourself some grace. Now, sometimes that's true, right? And we both can can laugh probably thinking of times where we've said that and that's true. We really do need to give ourselves grace. But more often than not, what it is, it's at the moment we have the choice or the opportunity to make a choice that moves us toward the direction of that feeling that we know we can't deny we are meant for more. And it's our comfort zone saying, no, 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 come back here, (laughs) come back here. And it's this way, this, this cute way of quitting. We never say I quit. We rationalize it. We choose comfort and we start to talk ourselves out of our big dreams. And that for me was the indication that I could keep choosing to listen to that voice, that cute quit that would talk me out of every single time I went to take a big step, or maybe just maybe there was something waiting for me on the other side of doing the thing that I was most afraid to do. And at that point in that moment, it was to write this book, finish it, publish it and doing so absolutely has changed my entire life. But that does not mean that I'm over the cute quit. Now, even five years later, my cute quit still shows up every single time I go to do something new I just notice the way that my mind wants to work against me. I love this. I love that it has a name. I I love that it's a soft name that we can like, you know, it's not scary to own. Um, So I think I would love to ask you about the self-talk that happens when we recognize the cute quit. Like how do we overcome, oh, I, I recognize this is happening now and step into the next piece um, yes. of going, well, uh, am I going to do this or, or is there something else? Like what happens in that moment? How do we get through that? Mm, oh, that's such a brilliant question. And you're right. I think for me, I had spent years really beating myself up and being quite harsh to myself over the things I hadn't done or choosing comfort. To me, what's actually really served me in this journey is bringing some humor into it. And the cute quit to me is like, we can all recognize it. We can hear it. It's like, oh, this just isn't a good time for me to be bold and amazing. And this powerhouse of a woman that I know I am. Yeah, it's just not convenient for me right now. And when I can laugh at myself, I think it brings it brings it down to a place where I can choose a new action. Because really what it is, the self-talk of it is always fighting for my comfort. It's fighting for me to go back to, and it's not even just comfort because I think we all know that one of the most uncomfortable things is knowing you're meant for more 
and choosing not to do anything about it. That's actually uncomfortable, but it's a familiar discomfort. So we trick ourselves into thinking that that's comfortable. So I think the, to answer your question, it's first you have to decide what you are committed to, you know, and when I committed to that book, I committed in a few ways. I paid money to be in a program that was supporting me. I gave my word to other people and everything in me wanted to quit. Actually a few times I tried to quit. This is the first, my first experience with acute quit. And I heard myself logically talking myself out of my dream. So I think, you know, whatever works for you, if you keep your dream on a vision board, or if you keep your dream in the listening of other people, meaning you've, you've told your best friends, Hey, here's, here's how, here's what I'm committed to, but here's also what I might say when I start to get uncomfortable, don't let me do that. And I think it's knowing yourself and knowing your flavor of how you tend to cute quit and being able to hear yourself. So I think it's, identifying it when you're not in the moment of the fear. So you can be more rational. Like I could look back, I'll give you a perfect example. I had all the podcast equipment to start my own show for five years before I ever wrote my book. So Um, I thought about, and I'm sure, right. Can we all not think of something that we said we were going to do? And then we didn't do it, or we settled for something smaller than that goal. And every time I wanted to quit writing my book, I was like, wow, this sounds familiar. This sounds like the same things I would say to myself before lo- going to take a step toward launching a podcast, which I never did it until many years later. And so the self-awareness sitting down and actually asking yourself, the last time I went to go do something big, what do I remember saying that talked me out of it if I didn't fulfill on that thing? And you want to start to just become aware. So then when you're in the moment of the fear and your mind is doing a really great job of doing what it does, which is keeping you safe and comfortable. And it's telling you all the reasons that seem valid at the time. You can be like, oh, no, no, wait. This is what that woman said on the podcast, something about a quit, a cute quit. And you can catch it in that moment and realize that this is your opportunity to choose the opposite thing of what the cute quit is trying to get you to do. And usually that's just follow through on the commitment, the original commitment that you made, but it's going to defy logic in that moment because your brain is just not, you're really your friend when we get to those moments of discomfort. Yeah, that's great. So first recognize, recognize that it's happening. Oh, it's that moment. This is what I'm doing. I know for me in those moments, what's been super useful is to, give myself the space to detach from the moment. Like I don't need to make a decision right now. I don't need to act right now. I don't need to go and watch Netflix right now. (laughs) But I also don't need to launch into this whole new company right now either. Like just give myself some space, recognize the moment, give myself some space to work through this discovery that I'm I'm now in this cute quit now that I have a name for it. I love it. (laughs) What I would like to uh, have a moment to talk about, uh, what are some of the big reasons that we justify to ourselves why we can't, because I know what mine is, but I'm sure that's not the only one. And I'm sure there's a lot of typical common cute quit why I can't do this. For me, mine is always, or in the second half of my life in any case, uh, has been too much, too much overwhelm. Because the first half of my life, I thought I could do everything and everything was exciting and there was lots of shiny objects and I did all the things. And then overwhelm became a big, Uh, a present a a common friend shall we say and so then my cute quit can go to I'm not going back to being too busy and doing too many things because I don't want to go back to overwhelm and so I'm sure that's common you know I want to protect sanity and calmness and time with my family etc and so that's my common one and that's why giving myself some space to work through okay if I do want to do this what do I have to give up or like what's the trade-off to make space so I hold on to my, I guess, boundaries, Lindsay. Do you know my boundaries are I'm not going to um, overcommit beyond my family commitments or all of those things. What else do you, like, is that a common one or is that just me? Um, And what other ones pop up on a regular basis that you see, like the typical reasons? Right. Well, as women, I, and I work primarily with women, uh, that, that can be a super common one. I'll, I, I'm just so grateful for your authenticity sharing that mine, mine was very similar. And I'll even share because the self-awareness that I 
reflected on was very clear that not only did I love to use my busyness as my cute quit, I had trained everyone around me to know how busy I was so that they didn't call me out on the fact that I wasn't stepping forward into the things that I said I was going to do. So how that looked for me was the moments that I really wanted to say, you know, and the cute quit, how it sounded for, for writing this book was that it just wasn't a good time. I had this whole other business. What are you doing? Like, these were the thoughts that kept going through my mind. Is this just a distraction? Although my soul knew I was being called very strongly toward finishing this book. And in the moment I would start to logically be like, yeah, you, you know what? You're right. Lindsay, this isn't a good time. You pro you just have too much on your plate. I would start to use all these things. And then I would notice the people around me in my life would say, gosh, you're so busy. You're just so busy. Hey, I'd love to connect with you. I know you're busy. And so sometimes to realize that we are so committed to these reasons and excuses for not pursuing our full purpose that we will even train the people around us to reinforce them. And I oh, wow. had to step back and see that, right? So it's not to say that, and those of you listening, I, I want to I want you to hear this. I honor the fact that you have full lives. I know you do. And I've seen this in women that I mentor. I'm actually in a season of this myself where I have to very carefully audit the things that I'm saying yes to because here's what happens for me. You can tell me if this is the truth for you. When I know I'm being called to like a next big level, like right now I'm, I'm setting some pretty audacious goals. And what starts to happen is opportunities that are aligned with me and my goals, maybe three years ago, start to come along and they feel comfortable and they feel like just an easy. Yes. It's just like a little dopamine hit of, I could say yes to that and I would be good at it and I would crush it and people would give me love and, and admiration and I would make a little bit of money, all these things. But I said I was committed to this other thing. So I know right now I have to say no to this other thing. And every single time I'm in a season like this, that's when the busyness starts to rear its head. So I love that you were able to identify that too. And whether it's overwhelm or busyness or taking care of everyone else's needs and not your own, not listening to your own. We all have, I think, one that tends to play on repeat and you'll know that it's it because other people in your life will even say that to you. They'll mm -hmm. say, wow, you just, you seem, you have so much going on. I don't know how you do it. And you're like, yes, you know, palm to your face. I don't know how I do it either. You know, you're just like, so we get kind of dramatic with it. But I think underneath that, underneath the, the most common cute quit are actually some, I've boiled it down to just four, the fear that's actually underneath. Cause it's not actually about the cute quit. It's the fear that we're trying, we think we're protecting ourselves from. So, uh, we can dive into that too, but I, that is so relatable. So, so relatable. I know a lot of you listening feel the same way. I'd like to touch on those four, but I, I loved what you said about, um, when the next big thing is bubbling away for you the old things come back and tempt you. It's sort of like um, whether you believe in God or the universe or whatever comes to just check with you that you're serious about it. Yes. And the, the thing that I often think about is, yes, I could go and do those things and I will feel good and it would be easy or I'll make money or I'll feel good or whatever. Um, but to get to the next big thing, that's still quite far in the future. So you're left with a gap. Like it's the gap. Yes. There's not, there's no um, instant gratification. There's no results yet because you're at the beginning of the new thing and you're saying no to the instant results of the things that you can do with your eyes closed. And you just have to sit present in the gap when there's nothing really exciting and fun going on. And if probably like you, Lindsay, I'm a creative entrepreneur. I love to have the I, the dopamine hit of the good things happening and the next shiny thing and the next exciting and I feel like I want to be moving forward so it's really hard to be in the gap when yeah. you're just starting something new and there's no reward yet so I think that's a good time to sanity check and go okay thank you for showing me that I'm I'm moving past you right now and I'm just going to be present in the gap to hold on to the future rewards would that be mm -hmm. true in that you said it so beautifully, the gap is actually necessary. 
mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. as you move forward toward bigger things, as we move forward, I'm, I'm saying this as someone who is currently in this season, my, my friend, a very good friend of mine, uh, says it this way. She said, imagine there's a, an airplane trying to land. And this airplane is like your next big breakthrough. It's the abundance, the success, the, the next thing you really want to create. But if the runway of your life is too cluttered, with other commitments, other things, other even mental clutter, that plane can't land. Your next blessing may not be able to fit into your life right now. And the, I think for, for myself, I'll just speak personally, the hardest thing is to protect space for that next thing to be able to enter my life. It is so true. And that gap, when you start to understand what it feels like when you're in it, and a lot of times it'll feel uncomfortable. It will feel like resistance. You'll almost feel like, shouldn't I be doing more? That's how you know that you're there. (laughs) And sometimes for some of us, again, I think it's the self-awareness to know what's true for you. For me, my work right in this moment is to stay uncomfortable in the gap for as, you know, it's not like I'm not working and I'm not producing income. I want to be clear about that, but, but it's not taking on anything that's anything less than a Oh, that's a hell yes. And I've had to, I've actually said no to some things recently that I'm like, I can't believe I'm saying no to that. I just know the distinct feeling and difference between a hell yes and a, yeah, that would be great. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you, and there's almost a bit of a, um, a come down, do you know, when you come home from a party and it's mm. quiet and you've been at this really great time and you thought, Oh, it's very quiet around here. And uh, being okay to just, well, actually go and do something for yourself in the quiet, because once you're busy again and you're doing and you're chasing and you're driving, there's no time for that. And it's hard to switch off, isn't it? To say, okay, this is just a small season, hopefully small or, um, to just do something different. And that's what I try to do is force myself to just go and do those extra things like get back to walking or have a massage or visit friends or something, because again, this won't last long. (laughs) Right. Right. And I I would even, this is true for me. I'm curious if this is true for you too. Sometimes my best ideas come when I do those things that don't seem productive, right? I'm using air quotes, productive, meaning I wasn't on a sales call. I wasn't meeting with a new client. I wasn't posting on social media with the intention of, of gaining new clients. I was actually just being in the energy of creativity and inspiration and space. And same for you, it sounds like. Oh, totally. Um, Holidays, walk, you know, walks on the beach, sometimes showers, you know, the, the, when you're, you know, just not really doing anything, this is when the best stuff comes. And so I I often talk about um, schedule in the big holidays, because that's actually your business thinking time. Like we think, oh, I'm too busy to go on a holiday, but actually go on the holiday because when you I don't know, from, but for me, it takes about three or four days to wind down and to let go of the stuff. And then if I can manage it long enough, a week, like within a couple of days, I'm, my brain is alive with all of the possibilities. And I love that. I love that. But you need to have the space to do that. And so you, I, I think you need to pre-engineer that into your year at the beginning of the year. In, in my seller mastery program, we do that at the, actually in December and we plan out the year before and say, well, when are we going to have these white space holidays? Because this is really important to your work. Oh, it's a reframe. This is not just about being with family. This is actually pre-planning white space. So um, I think it's super important. Mm, and I can only imagine, you know, if a lot of you listening are owners of physical spaces, so physical salons, that feels even more true to say that you can't get away. And I just really encourage you to, if parts of this conversation are, are just kind of poking at, at your heart to say, are you really too busy or do you create, keep recreating too busy so that you don't have to be responsible for the next big ideas or the next big calling or stepping into your next level of leadership. And I say that with so much love as someone who constantly finds that I keep trying to reinforce a smaller version of myself when I'm just really meant for more. I love that so much that you intentionally build that in with your clients. That's so important. Yeah. Well, Lindsay, you're a business owner. Um, 
what is a quote or a mantra or uh, something that keeps you focused, forward moving, keeps you sane maybe? What's something that's really worked for you that you can share? The first thing that came to mind when you asked this was it's actually the, the mantra, the motto of powerhouse women, my community, and it's that we're not meant to do business or life alone. And not only does that help to ground me in the reminder that if it feels hard or if I'm struggling at the moment, it's probably because I'm trying to do things alone that I could phone a friend, ask for help, even ask um, more recently, I've been going for some big goals. And so um, the imposter syndrome, the fears have really been bubbling up. And so even phoning a friend and saying, Hey, could you remind me right now? Like just how mu much of a difference I make, I, I will actually ask friends for that specific kind of uh, acknowledgement if I'm in a season where I just realize I need to be reminded of, of who I am. So you're not meant to do business or life alone. It's why I love nothing makes me happier than seeing women like you creating communities and spaces for business owners to remember that. I love that. That's, that's awesome for sure. All right. What about a, a book, a podcast, a resource, something that you think all sell owners should get their hands on? Yes. So, okay. If you have loved this conversation and you know that there is some inner work that maybe you've been putting to the wayside that, you know, you're ready to clear the runway and start to move through some of these blocks, a book that I read at least once a year, I'm currently rereading it right now is called the big leap. And it's all about how to go beyond where you think you're capable of and really leap into what he calls your zone of genius. And it has you look at a lot of the places where you get stopped. So I feel like for this conversation, that book, it's like my all time highest recommended read for every business owner. Absolutely. That's perfect. I have that on uh, audible. Um, so you can find it there too. It's one of those things you can listen to in the car, which is great. Yes. Um, amazing. I'm going to make sure I put a link to that in the show notes of this episode. Uh, we want to stalk you, find out more about uh, Powerhouse Woman. So please let us know what's your dub dub and your socials. Like, where can we find you? Oh, you're so generous. I would love to connect and just really so, so inspired by the work that all of you are doing. Um, on everywhere, it's just under Powerhouse Women. So we do have a podcast called Powerhouse Women. On Instagram, it's Powerhouse underscore women. And my personal socials should be pretty easy to find from there. But just really just loved the invitation to get to have this conversation with you and get to make a new friend today. So thank you. It's amazing. Thank you so much.